very good morning today we'll be talking on ecg interpretation on different types of blocks meaning ecg which shows you abnormality in conduction of the electrical pathway in conductive tissue of heart so i am dr janak patel i'll be talking on different types of blocks i'll try to make it as simple as possible so heart blocks can be divided into two groups one at the level of av node or bundle of his and second in different bundles that is right bundle and left bundle you can also have a block at the level of sa node the impulse which generates from the sa node cannot come out so you call that as a sa block or you call that as a sinoatrial exit block or you can there is one disease which is called as sick sinus syndrome while in a av node disorders it is a first degree av block second degree av block which is divided into two mobis type 1 called as van kebeck mobis type 2 and complete heart block while bundle branch block mobis type 2 can be fixed block like 3 is to 1 2 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 and third degree av block is also called as a complete heart block bundle branch block can be divided into right bundle which can be complete right bundle branch block or incomplete rbbb that is incomplete right bundle branch block same way left bundle branch block complete or incomplete left bundle branch block and left bundle is divided into two we call as a left anterior hemi block or left anterior fascicular block and left posterior hemi block or left posterior fascicular block and you can have a combination of right bundle with left anterior hemi block or left posterior hemi block so that we call as bifascicular block this is bifascicular block rbbb plus lahb or rbbb plus lphb and if either of these two is combined with a av block we call that as a trifascicular block and sometimes you come across a conduction defects which does not fit with this criteria and there will be a broad qrs complex we call that as a intraventricular conduction blocks and i already told you right bundle branch block with lahb with av block we call as a trifascicular block so we'll be talking about first we call as a sinoatrial exit block or sa block which means that sinus node is generating the impulse but it does not come out and activates the atrium and then that impulse cannot pass through av node because it does not activate the atrium this is very common with myocardial infarction some of the drugs which will block sa node hypoxia and increase in the vagal tone impulse is blocked from leaving the sa node so it does not activate the atrium and as it does not activate the atrium there is no p wave no qrs complex and the second beat will be produced as a multiple of r so it will produce one miss cycle or two miss cycle so it will be exactly the multiple of r and it is easily confused with sinus pause or we call it as a sinus arrest in sinus arrest this pause is not exactly the multiple of r now i'll show you here this is a normal p wave qrs complex p wave qrs complex p wave qrs complex this is the rr interval the next bit was supposed to come somewhere here it does not come so sinus node has generated the impulse but it has not come out so there is no p wave no qrs complex and next has come exactly at the r so this is nearly 2r 
and this is the RR interval. This is exactly the 2R interval. So this is called sinoatrial exit flow. As there is no P and QRS complex, there is no pulse, no apex peak. Hence, this will produce irregular pulse, but no apex pulse deficit. Now you can see here again, the bit was supposed to come here. It has not come. There is no P wave, no QRS complex. So it will produce a long pause. So this is not sinoatrial pause, but it is sinoatrial exit block because this is exactly 2R interval. Same way you can see here. Now there are different types they are describing. Sinoatrial exit block type 1, type 2, etc. We don't go into that detail. So this is another ECG showing you rhythm strip which is showing you normal sinus bit, normal sinus bit and here the sinus bit has not come. So sinus node has generated the impulse but it has not come out and activated the atrium. So there is no P wave, no QRS complex. Hence there will be no pulse and this is called missed cycle and this will be exactly 2R interval. So that is called sinoatrial exit block. While in a sinus arrest, sinus node stops generating the impulse. So again, there is no PQRST and this pause will remain till the sinus node gets activated and starts a new cycle. So this is not the multiple of RR. This is not the multiple of RR. And that is how you try to differentiate between sinus arrest and sinoatrial exit block. So you can see here, this is the RR interval. And this interval is not the multiple of RR. The next cycle will again have that interval or maybe a different interval. So this is sinus arrest or sinoatrial exit block. You will have to calculate this interval should be multiple of RR. Then it is sinoatrial exit block. And if it is not the multiple of RR, then it is a sinus arrest or we call sinus pause. Again, same thing. You can see here there is no PQRST. And if this is a multiple of RR, then this is sinoatrial exit flow. There is an another condition we call as a sick sinus syndrome. Or we also call lazy sinus syndrome. Or we call tachybrady arrhythmia syndrome. Now this is a disorder of SA node where SA node suddenly starts generating an electrical impulse at a fast rate or suddenly the impulse from SA node are blocked or the impulse are reduced. So there will be tachycardia in between and there will be suddenly a arrest or a pause or there will be SA block. So this will be tachycardia and bradycardia alternating. You will have suddenly a run of tachycardia followed by a bradycardia and in the same rhythm strip you can demonstrate that quite frequently and these different types of arrhythmias can be there of SA node or of atrium also. So that is sick sinus syndrome and this usually requires an artificial pacemaker which is a rate driven pacemaker. In this trip also you can see that this is tachycardia and suddenly without any treatment or without any particular drugs there is a bradycardia. So this is the reason why it is called tachy brady arrhythmia syndrome. And very frequently in sick sinus syndrome, you can see sinus bradycardia where the rate can be less than 40. You can see a sinus arrest more than 3 seconds. Or you can see a sinoatrial block of type 2 variety. You can see non-sinus tachyarrhythmias like atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia in between. Or you can even have a SA node re-entry tachycardias. And suddenly there can be very fast rate etc. So all this can be seen in a one person at different times. We call that as a sick sinus syndrome. You can see here, this is normal rate, there is a bradycardia, there is suddenly a big pause and you can see here there is a big pause, severe sinus bradycardia and here there is a sinus arrest. You can see again here there is a sinus arrest. Is it clear? Here the impulse is blocked. You can see this is AV nodal rhythm in the same person at different times. Then here suddenly you see atrial clutter. Then again there is a sinus pause. You can see there is a bradycardia. This is intraventricular conduction defects. This is a normal sinus rhythm. Again you can see a sinus arrest, intraventricular conduction defects, etc. So there are multiple 
different types of cardiac arrhythmia you can see in the same person suddenly bradycardia suddenly tachycardia now there is an another variety which we talk about is sinus arrhythmia or sinus dysarrhythmia meaning the rr interval goes on changing so there is an irregularly irregular pulse but each qrs complex are preceded by p wave and this p wave is in the same direction of a qrs complex so it is generated from the sinus node but this rr interval is becoming irregularly irregular during inspiration and expiration meaning during inspiration the rate is increasing while during expiration the rate is decreasing if this phenomena continues it is called sinus arrhythmias or sinus dysrhythmias and this particular is very common with the person who are having copd and pulmonary hypertension etc so again you can see here this is during expiration this is during inspiration you can see again here during inspiration the rate is increasing during expiration the rate is decreasing now this is an another condition where the impulse is generated you get the p wave but there is no transmission of that impulse to the ventricle hence there is no qrs complex no qrs complex no ventricular contraction no cardiac output and person will have no blood supply to brain and other other vital organs and person will have a syncopal attack or person can even have a seizures and sometimes if it is prolonged irreversible brain damage and sometimes the person can have a sudden cardiac death you can see a normal sinus beat normal sinus beat followed by only p wave no qrs complex such condition is called stoke adam attack so this is a classical stoke adam attack now we are going through the other part we call as a short pr interval now there is a condition where you will have a pr interval less than 3 small square means it is even less than 3 small square that is 0.12 second so pr interval can be 0.8 second etc this you will get in two classical condition we call as a wpw syndrome and lgl syndrome in wpw syndrome there is a short pr interval with a wide qrs complex and on a ascending limb there is a delta wave while in a lgl there is a short pr interval qrs complex is narrow and there is no delta wave in wpw that is wolf parkinson white syndrome there are bundle of cans which are connecting atrium to ventricle so atrium the impulse from atrium will directly bypass the av node and it will enter into ventricle producing a short pr interval and it will activate at the level of bundle of his and so it produces a delta wave in qrs complex while in lgl there is a bypass road or bypass bundle at the level of av node so it passes through the av node and bypasses the av node so there is no change in the qrs complex hence qrs complex is narrow this is pre excitation syndrome and this will produce a re entry tachycardia which will bypass av node and it will pass through atrium into ventricle so it is called atrio ventricular re entry tachycardia which are usually supra ventricular tachycardia with in wpw it will be usually with a wide qrs complex so we will have a wide qrs complex supra ventricular tachycardia and depending upon from which chamber it is coming if it is coming from la to lv it will be right bundle branch block pattern and if it is coming from right atrium into right ventricle it will be having a left bundle branch block pattern and that you will see classical in case of a wpw syndrome while you will have a narrow narrow qrs re entry tachycardia in lgl syndromes that is long ganok levine syndrome yes in av junctional rhythm also you will have a short pr because p wave may be present just before a qrs complex or just after the qrs complex and qrs complex will be narrow this is av junctional rhythm and if you get an ectopic atrial beat that will be also having abnormal p wave preceded by preceded before qrs complex it will be premature that's why it is called ectopic 
and it is coming from atrium that's why it is called ectopic atrial premature bit and that will produce a abnormal p wave followed by a normal qrs complex that will have a normal pulse but little low volume and there will be apex hence in this particular you will not have a apex pulse deficit but it will produce irregular pulse may be regularly irregular or irregularly irregular and in some of the normal variants you can have a short pr but may not be wpw or lga so this is what is shown here short pr with a delta wave on a ascending leaf so this is wpw we call it a wolf parkinson white syndrome it will be better seen in a second so this is short pr with a broad qrs complex and that will produce a reentry tachycardia this is bundle of kent from there you will get a reentry and that will produce a trio ventricular reentry tachycardia and this bundle is called bundle of kent you can see here a short pr interval delta wave on the ascending limb of a qrs complex and qrs complex is wide it is more than 3 small square so this is classical wpw syndrome and if it bypasses from this side that is from right atrium into right ventricle it will have a left bundle branch block pattern and if it bypasses here then it will have a rbbb pattern so this is a short pr interval with a delta wave here so this is classical of wpw syndrome delta wave on ascending limb while here if you see there is a short pr interval but there is no delta wave qrs complex is normal that is lgl syndrome no delta wave. now i'll show you some of junctional rhythm which we have already discussed in the rhythm part so you can see here the p wave is just before the qrs complex and that will produce a junctional rhythm now we'll go to what we called as hard blocks this is junctional rhythm so now we are going to hard blocks so in a hard block we'll be discussing av nodal blocks so first degree av block second degree av block complete hard block or we call a third degree av block in a first degree how hard block pay attention it is very important each p wave is followed by qrs complex meaning p wave indicates that the impulse has come from the sinus node it is activated the atrium and when it is passing through the av node there is a delay in the transmission which produces increase in the pr interval and this pr interval is more than 0.2 second means more than 5 small square so this produces first degree av block so for each p wave there is one qrs complex pr interval is fixed pr interval is more, more than 0.2 second and this produces classical first degree av block this will give rise to decrease in the heart rate maybe bradycardia or maybe normal but towards 60 but each p wave is followed by qrs complex hence it is regular rhythm is absolutely regular and the person will have a normal pulse this is typical of first degree av block while what happens in a second degree av block in a second degree av block the impulse is generated from sa node it will activate the atrium it will go to av node some impulse will be transmitted some impulse will not be transmitted and when the impulse is not transmitted you will have a p wave and there will be no qrs complex following that p wave these are divided into two varieties mobis type 1 mobis type 2 in mobis type 1 there is a gradual increase in the delay time in a av node so pr interval gradual increases and one p wave will not be transmitted this is called wenke beck phenomena or also called as mobis type 1 second degree av block why in case of a mobis type 2 one p wave which is activated activation of a atrium is transmitted via the av node you will have a normal qrs complex following that that pr interval may be normal but second impulse may not be transmitted again third impulse 
which comes from the SA node activates the atrium and passes through the AV node. So that is either 2 is to 1 block or 3 is to 1 block. This is called fixed ratio block and this is in Mobis type 2. While in a complete heart block or we call as a third degree AV block, SA node activates the atrium. So you have got a P wave and depending upon the SA node activity, you will have an atrial rate. So P wave will be having an atrial rate, but P wave is not transmitted to the ventricle. So there is no transmission from atrium into ventricle via AV node. Hence it is called as a complete heart block. Now ventricle takes over. Ventricle starts beating at its own rate. That is idioventricular rate which is usually between 20 to 40 per minute and that is depending upon from where the focus is. If the focus is from the bundle of his, it will be a narrow QRS complex and if the focus is in the ventricle, it will be a broad QRS complex. In this particular condition, the atrium is beating at its own rate, ventricle is beating at its own rate. So, a atrium produces P wave and ventricle produces QRS complex. Atrial rate is faster than ventricular rate. So P wave are more than QRS complex. QRS complex is broad and usually the rate is idioventricular rhythm rate. And that particular rate is between 20 to 40 per minute. This is classical in third degree AV block or we call as a complete heart block. So in a first degree AV block, P wave are equal to QRS complex, but PR interval is more than 5 small square, we call 0.2 second. The rhythm wise, it is absolutely regular. In a second degree AV block or Mobis type 1, P wave are more than QRS complex because one P wave is not transmitted. So there is a progressive increase in the PR interval and one P wave is not transmitted and there is no QRS complex. Hence, the rhythm is irregular. This is in Mobis type 1 or we call it a Venkebeck phenomena. In Mobis type 2, P wave are more than R wave, but it is absolutely constant. So usually it is 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1, meaning for 3 P wave, 1 is transmitted or for 2 P wave, 1 is transmitted. So it is regular while in a complete heart block. P wave are more than QRS complex. It is regular, but P wave is independent, QRS complex is independent. And depending upon the ventricular focus, the QRS complex may be narrow or QRS complex may be broad. The ventricular rate will be between 20 to 40 per minute, but it will be regular. So only in case of Mobis type 1, it is irregular. While in a case of AV block, fixed block and complete heart block, Mobis type 2, first degree AV block and complete heart block, the rhythm is regular. So now we are showing you those particular. Now you can see here in this ECG, there is a P wave, QRS complex, P wave, QRS complex, P wave, QRS complex. All P wave are followed by QRS complex. And if you look at the PR interval, it is 0.34 second. And all PR interval are constant. This is classical first degree V block. And because of this prolonged PR interval, the rate becomes little slow. So person might have toward predicardia. You can see here also, the PR interval is markedly prolonged. And see this RR interval, it gets prolonged. So that's the reason why person can have a predicardia and the pulse rhythm will be absolutely regular. This is first degree V block. Again, okay, you can see this is a P wave or each P wave are followed by QRS complex. So P wave is equal to QRS complex, but PR interval, you can see here, it is almost eight small square. So it is 0.32 second. So it is almost here also, if you see here, this is almost nine small square. So 0.36 second. So this is first degree V block. PR interval is fixed and it is more than 0.2 second. And each P wave is followed by QRS complex and QRS complex is narrow. 
So now you can see here again, each P wave is followed by QRS complex. PR interval is fixed. And if you see the PR interval, it is prolonged. It is almost more than 10 small square, so almost 0.4 seconds. So it is more than 0.2, so it is in favor of first degree wave long. This is at a 50 millimeter speed. But if you see here, the PR interval is almost 9 small square. So it is first degree wave long. Now, similar thing you can see also in case of a hyperkalemia. So, PR interval can get prolonged in hyperkalemia also. What happens is initially the P wave starts becoming flatter, the PR interval is prolonged, PR interval gets prolonged. You can see here the PR interval is getting prolonged. The PR interval is more than 6 small square. So, P, there will be first degree wave block. QRS complex will become wider. So, if you get PR interval prolongation with QRS complex becoming wider and the T wave is top, see that T wave is top. Can you see this T wave? T wave is top. So, if you see these three things together, tall T wave, first degree V block and QRS complex becoming wider, do suspect hyperkalemia. So, this is a very good ECG showing you those three characteristics, tall T wave, you can clearly see this tall T wave and you will have a first degree V block and there will be a QRS complex widening. Now, in a second degree V block, there are two varieties, Mobis type 1, Mobis type 2. In Mobis type 1, see this, 0 0.18, 0 0.24 and then this P wave is not followed by a QRS complex. This is Van Quebec phenomena. While in Mobis type 2, you can see here, this is 0 0.18, 0 0.18, and then this P wave is not transmitted. Again, PR interval is constant, and another P wave will not be transmitted. Depending upon for how many P wave, what is not transmitted, we call fixed block. So this is second degree AV block. Mobis type 1 is also called as a Van Quebec. So you can see here, PR interval is getting prolonged and then this fourth P wave is not transmitted. Again, PR interval, PR interval will be getting prolonged. While you see here, this is PR interval, then this P wave is not transmitted. This P wave is again transmitted. So this we can call 2 is to 1 block. So this is one which is not transmitted, this is transmitted. So this is a fixed block or we call as a 2 is to 1 block. Again, you can see here, PR interval, further increase, further increase, further increase, and then this is not transmitted. There is no QRS complex here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Fifth bit is not transmitted. This will give rise to no pulse here. This will produce irregular pulse, irregular pulse, because here there will be no pulse, no apex. Apex pulse deficit will not be there but this pulse will be a drop bit or we will call as a miss bit. Well, in Mobis type 2, this you can see in Mobis type 2, this P wave does not produce a pulse, this P wave, but this will be a fixed block. One transmitted, second transmitted, third is not transmitted. Here, one, two, three are transmitted, fourth is not transmitted. So, this will call as variable block, variable block, depending upon, again you can see, 1, 2, 3 are transmitted. Here, you can see that 1 is transmitted, this is not transmitted, this is transmitted, these two are not transmitted, again this. So, this is variable block and when you get such, this is 2 is to 1 block, this is 2 is to 1 block, this is 3 is to 1 block, this will call is an advanced second degree AV block because this is changing and sooner or later it will become complete heart block. Now this is a fixed block, you can see this, there is one P wave here, one P wave here, one P wave second, one, this is not transmitted, this is not transmitted, this is not transmitted, this is also not transmitted, this is not transmitted. So this is a fixed two is to one block. Well if you see here, this is one, two and three, 
these two are not transmitted the third is transmitted so this is 3 is to 1 block this is fixed block but this interval will remain constant hence here the pulse rhythm will be regular so in the fixed second degree ab block mobis type 2 their pulse rhythm will be regular in 4 is to 1 block also you can see this rr interval this will be constant while here 1 2 3 and 4th is transmitted 1 2 3 and 4th is transmitted so this is 4 is to 1 block fixed ratio block in mobis type 2 so here also the pulse will be regular and there will be severe bradycardia now in a complete heart block you can see these are the p waves you can see these are the p wave the p wave are more than rr you can see p wave are more if you calculate the number of p wave they are more and p wave is not related to qrs complex here this is a narrow qrs complex so this focus is coming somewhere from here while this is coming below the bundle of his so this is a broad qrs complex and as the p wave and qrs complex are not related p wave are more than qrs complex and the ventricular rate is between 20 to 40 per minute this is what we call as complete heart block and here the focus is here below the bundle of his here the focus ventricular focus or ventricular complex are coming from bundle of his so then later on the transmission is normal by a right bundle as well as left bundle producing narrow qrs complex otherwise if the focus is coming from the ventricle so always the qrs complex will be broad this is classical complete heart block or we call it a third degree ab block you can see again here p wave p wave p wave are more than qrs complex rr interval is constant this is a idioventricular rhythm but the ventricular focus is higher up that is close to bundle of his hence there is a narrow qrs complex but the p wave is independent qrs complex is independent this rate is idioventricular rhythm rate and hence this will be between 20 to 40 per minute depending upon the rate we call as accelerated rhythm normal rhythm or with slow ventricular rate so this is third degree av block or we call complete heart block again you can see here this is a broad qrs complex so this is coming from the focus which is below the bundle of his hence this is a broad qrs complex this is rr interval is constant so rhythm will be regular and p wave is independent p wave are more than qrs complex this is classical complete heart block now in a av dissociation what will happen is p wave will be independent we will see the p wave independent but you see the qrs complex rate qrs complex rate will be little faster so ventricular contraction is independent atrial contraction is independent but when ventricular contraction is faster and atrial contraction is little less the ventricular impulse cannot go from ventricle reverse back via av node and activates the atrium hence atrium is independent ventricle is independent so atrium and ventricle has dissociated so in this particular condition you will call that as av dissociation and this is very classical finding which you can come across in some of the condition we call as a ventricular tachycardia and usually in this you will have a broad complex broad qrs complex tachycardia and this becomes one of the important finding which will tell you that this is vt not supraventricular tachycardia because in supraventricular tachycardia there is no av dissociation and here this is shown in a little broader way you can see that these are qrs complex which are more than pp so atrial rate is slower than ventricular rate you will easily be able to make out that this is av dissociation and this will happen in the case of a ventricular tachycardia now this is again a third degree av block and in this complexes are junctional escape bits so these bits are coming from close to the junction or we call as a av node junction and hence they are narrow qrs complex 
and you can see that here the p wave are not followed by qrs complex so this is intermittent third degree wave block this is intermittent third degree wave block now we go to the blocks below the bundle of his if right bundle is damaged it will produce right bundle branch block maybe partial or complete left bundle branch block partial or complete and in left bundle we have got two bundles anterior fascicle posterior fascicle so left anterior hemi block posterior hemi block or we call left anterior fascicular block left posterior fascicular block and combination that is we call bifascicular where right bundle branch block remains with anterior or posterior and in a trifascicular block it is right bundle branch block with either anterior or posterior usually the most common is anterior hemi block with first degree wave block this is trifascicular block we'll be showing you all the different ecg in that simple way to remember in a left bundle branch block in v1 in v1 you will have a w pattern and v6 you will have a m pattern that is rs r dash pattern and while in a v1 you will have a deep s wave that will be peculiar in a left bundle branch block while in a right bundle branch block in v1 you will have a rs r dash pattern and in v6 you will have a deep and broad s wave that is characteristic of this instead of remembering this way it is better to remember that in a left bundle branch block v6 will have a rs r dash pattern and you will have a deep s wave in v1 while in a case of a right bundle branch block you will have a rs r dash pattern in v1 and you will have a deep and broad s wave in v6 so these are the difference between those all four varieties that is left bundle branch block right bundle branch block left anterior hemi block left posterior hemi block you can go through it is but i'll try to make it simpler even than this it will be much simpler than this so you will understand much better way so i'm going through the other slide so in a right bundle branch block again repeating it is a broad qrs complex in a v1 you get r s r dash pattern and in v6 you will have a small q wave a deep s wave deep s wave in v6 and it will be little broad also so this will be peculiar in case of a right bundle branch block so this will be peculiar you can see r s r dash pattern in v1 and in v6 you will have a deep and broad s wave this is characteristic so you will have a small q wave and deep s wave in v6 this is in case of a right bundle branch block but if qrs complex is less than 0.12 and more than 0.1 second then we call that is a incomplete all other characteristics remain the same so this will be very very characteristic and t wave will be always in opposite direction of qrs complex so again i'll show that you can see t wave is in opposite direction right so that will be against qrs complex now this is lid one we have a tall r wave s wave which will be broad and deep in avr you will have a terminal r wave in v1 you will have rs r dash pattern and in v6 you will have a broad and deep s wave and there may be a q wave this is characteristic of right bundle branch block if this qrs complex is less than 3 small square then we call it a incomplete right bundle branch block and if it is more than 0.12 second we call it a complete right bundle branch block so that is the only difference between the two regarding a duration all other characteristics remain the same so you can see here rs r dash pattern t wave inverted and in v6 if you see here a small s wave or s wave is there in v1 also you got a r wave and there is an s wave in v1 uh, sorry in lid 1 so this is incomplete because the qrs complex is less than 3 small square so this is incomplete right bundle branch block and here if you see 
this is a broad QRS complex, RS are this pattern. And in V6, you can see a S wave and T wave in opposite direction. You can see T wave is in opposite direction. And in lead one also, you have got a S wave with T wave in opposite direction. This is right bundle branch block. Similar type of ECG you can see in a Brugada. But what happens in a Brugada syndrome? In V1, you will have R wave, deep S wave, followed by a R wave. But from that R wave, now you will have a ST segment which will be a down sloping and T wave inversion. If you see in a V1, this shape, this is characteristic of a Brugada syndrome. And this Brugada syndrome is a familial disorders, genetic disorder. And it can end up with ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and sometimes the person can have a sudden cardiac death. So if you detect this early, this will be seen in V1 and V2. V1 and V2. You can see here from this, it is a curved up and you have got an inverted T wave, sharp down sloping. These are of a three variety, type 1, type 2, and type 3. We may not be able to make out all those. So this will have a ventricular fibrillation or polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that is this is a cowed up ST segment with T wave inversion and this is very characteristic which will you, you see in a V1 and V2 more in V1 and V2 sometime you can see even in V3 and there is a peculiar inverted T wave it can be sharp inverted T wave or it can be shadow type that is first positive and then again negative so it can be biphasic variety Left bundle branch block again broad QRS complex in V1 you will have a small Q wave small R wave in V6 followed by RSR dash pattern so in V1 in left bundle branch block you will have a deep S wave in V1 while in case of a V6 you will have RSR dash pattern that is peculiar in a left bundle branch block and even same pattern that RSR dash pattern you will see in lead 1 and AVL. So in lead 1 and AVL plus V6 you will have a broad RSR dash pattern of a QRS complex and you will have a deep S wave in V1. V1 you will have a deep S wave or we call it a poor R progression that will be and if this pattern has got QRS complex less than 3 small square but more than 0 0.1, 2 and a half, we'll call that as an incomplete left bundle branch block. And if it is more than 0 0.12 second, we'll call as a complete left bundle branch block. You can see here in lead 1, AVL and V5, V6. We've got a broad QRS complex, RSR dash pattern and T wave in opposite direction, characteristic. And in V1, you will have a deep S wave that is again a characteristic of left under branch block and in present this I have already discussed before separate lecture I have taken on Segorba's criteria that in presence of left bundle branch block to detect an ischemic heart disease we call STEMI you should have a three separate criteria any one of these three that is in V4, V5, V6 if you have got an ST elevation in a con quadrant QRS complex so if you this is upright in left bundle branch block in V5, V6 and if the ST segment is elevated more than 1 millimeter, you give 5 points. In V1, V2 and V3 which are having a con quadrant complexes in left bundle branch block because this is negative, this is upright, this is con quadrant, this is same direction. So now if you get ST elevation, this is in opposite direction but if you get this elevation. So this is con quadrant, this is this quadrant. So if you have got ST depression more than 1 millimeter, it is 3 point. And if you get an ST elevation more than 5 small square, it is 2 point. More than 2 point or equal to 2 point is considered as evidence of STEMI in presence of LBBB. So either the person has got a previous left bundle branch block or has got a recent left bundle branch block. And if you get this criteria, any one of these three criteria, it will be in favor of a STEMI. I have repeated this before. You can see here, this is a broad QRS complex, lead one, AVL, and V5, V6. V5, V6, 
broad QRS complex, RS are this pattern, T wave in opposite direction, and in V1, you get a deep S wave in favor of left bundle branch block. So that is characteristic. Now we go to what we call as left anterior fascicular block or left anterior hemi block. What happens in the left anterior hemi block? One fascicle is blocked, one fascicle is working, posterior fascicle is working. Because of this, still it will produce QRS complex which will be normal. So if you come across a QRS complex which is normal, means less than two and a half small square or we call less than 0.1 second. If there is a left axis deviation and in lead one and ABF, normally in a left bundle branch block, you get a RS RDS pattern. But instead of RS RDS pattern, you get a small Q wave followed by a tall R wave. And in lead two, lead three and ABF, you get a small R and deep S wave. This will be in favor of left anterior hemi block. This is characteristics. And if you get in AVR, a little R wave prominent, that is again in favor of a left anterior hemi block. This is left anterior hemi block. So left axis deviation, small Q wave followed by a R wave in lead one, deep S wave in lead two and lead three. And if you get an S wave also in ABF and V6, it will be in favor of a left anterior hemi block. This is, you can see that small Q wave followed by a R wave. Lead two and lead three will have a deep S wave. This will be left anterior hemi block. And this will also show you that this is a left axis deviation. This is upright, this is negative, so this is a left axis deviation. If you get this, this is a left anterior hemi block or left anterior fascicular block. Again, you can see lead one, small Q followed by a R wave and lead two and lead three, a deep S wave, deep S wave. Even you will see the deep S wave in V6 also. So this is a left anterior and QRS complex is narrow. Left anterior, again, you can see a small Q followed by R, lead two and lead three, lead two and lead three, deep S wave. That will be in favor of a left anterior fascicular block. While posterior fascicular block, which are very, very uncommon, but still, in that you will get a right axis deviation. In lead one, instead of Q and R, you will have R and S, means the pattern which you are seeing in a left anterior hemi block in lead two, lead three, they will be seen in lead one. And what you are seeing in lead one, you will see in a lead two and lead three. So in lead two and three, you will see small Q with tall R, and you will see a small R and deep S wave in lead one. That is very characteristic of a left posterior hemi block. So right axis deviation, large S wave in lead one and tall R wave in lead two, lead three will be in favor of what we call as a left posterior hemi block. If you can identify well and good, you can see here small R followed by a deep S wave, while in a two and three, this is small Q followed by an R wave in lead two and three. So this is right axis deviation with deep S wave in lead one and tall R wave in two and three. This is left posterior hemi block and QRS complex is less than 0.1 second. Again, you can see deep S wave in lead two while R wave in lead two and lead three. That is characteristic. Again, you can see here S wave, R wave in two and three, left posterior hemi block. In a bifascicular block, it is difficult to identify unless you suspect. So if you get an RS RDS pattern in lead V1 with a big R wave and broad slurred wave, that is RBBB pattern, there is a prolongation of QR duration more than 0.12 second or longer. And there is a wide slurred S wave in V5 and V6. This will be in favor of what we call as a bifascicular block. And usually in a RBBB, we don't get right axis deviation or a left axis deviation. So in presence of RBBB, if you get a right axis deviation or a left axis deviation, you should suspect bifascicular block. That is a simple way to understand. So in presence of a right bundle bright block pattern, if you get a right axis deviation or if you get a left axis deviation, it will be bifascicular block.
So if it is a left axis deviation, it is with left anterior hemi block. If it is a right axis deviation, it is a left posterior hemi block. Left posterior hemi blocks are less common. So usually it is very common with left anterior hemi block. So if you get a RBBB pattern and there is a left axis deviation in presence of RBBB, it is a bifascicular block. Do look at axis in presence of right bundle branch block. So this is a bifascicular block. You can see this is an RBBB pattern and if you see here, this is roughly left axis deviation. So this is RBBB plus left anterior. Here you can see a tall R wave with S wave. Lead 2, lead 3 has got a deep S wave. This is S wave. You can see an S wave. So this is a left axis deviation. There is a terminal R wave in AVR and this is RS, RS pattern. V5, V6 shows a S wave. This is RBBB with left axis deviation. So that is because of left anterior hemi block. So this is left anterior fascicular block. Again, you can see here, this is left axis deviation and V1 shows you a RBBB pattern. V1 shows you RS, RDS pattern, clear cut RS, RDS pattern, clear cut. So this is RBBB with left anterior fascicular block, bifascicular block. While in a posterior fascicular block, very rare. Now if you see here, there is an RBBB pattern. V1 it shows you a broad QRS complex, RS RDS pattern. V3 is showing you that RS RDS pattern. So this is a right bundle plant block. And if you see in V1, there is an S wave and lit 3, there is an R wave. So this is a right axis deviation. So if you get a right axis deviation in presence of a right bundle branch block and lead 1 is showing you a negative S wave and positive R in lead 2 and lead 3, it is in favor of left posterior hemi block. And trifascicular block is usually a combination of RBBB with LAHB with prolonged PR interval that you call is a trifascicular block. And if you come across a normal P wave, normal PR interval, and QRS complex is little more than 0.12 second, which is without a typical bundle branch block pattern. You will call that as intraventricular conduction defects. So if you see one or two complex which are little broad, but does not follow the criteria for RBBB or LBBB, then we call that as an intraventricular conduction defect. Here I end my lecture. I hope this will be simplified and will be helpful to you in future.